All right, joining me now is Idaho Republican Congressman Russ Fulcher. Maybe you'll answer that for me, sir. You support Jim Jordan. Will we see more than one round? I think we will see more than one round. And, uh, uh, but from the indication of what uh, uh, Congressman Jordan said, uh, he's, he is uh, prepared to make sure that by tomorrow night we have a speaker. And so if I understand correctly, we still have enough that uh, would prevent that on round one. So I'm going to project we will have multiple rounds. Why is he taking this to the floor if he doesn't have the votes yet? Well, it's one thing to have a secret ballot in conference, Brianna. It's another thing to have a live vote in front of the world. And, and so everyone will need to stand up, do a roll call vote. Then we know for sure exactly where everyone is. It's also more difficult as a Republican to vote no. And so I think that's one of the reasons why Congressman Jordan is, uh, is uh, pursuing this path. So, it, I mean, it sounds like we're headed for another chaotic, I think I'm being generous with that adjective, process, like we saw with Kevin McCarthy being elected speaker. He ultimately won, of course, no guarantee that happens with Jordan. Would you say that's fair, we're headed for a chaotic process like that? I think so, but you need to understand kind of the root of the issue, at least in my opinion, on why this is coming around. And we all know there's a philosophical divide between Republicans and modern day Democrats with uh, their agenda and their thought process. The same carries over to leadership. By our very nature, Republicans tend to be independent. We tend to be more self-sufficient and more pro-liberty minded and all that. The modern day Democrat, on the other hand, is a little bit more compliant, more suited to uh, big government situations and even to leadership. And so I am not surprised that you see conflict when there's Republican leadership at bay. We're all kind of independent and, uh, and that's how this plays out, and one of the reasons why you see the conflict that you do with the Republican. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but there's a difference between being a big tent party and being a circus tent party. Are you worried about how this makes America look chaotic and weak on the world stage? Not just am I worried about it, but there's urgency, as your previous story pointed out. We have the situation in Israel. We have our own open southern border, which I believe greatly puts Americans at risk because we don't know who's coming in. We have the inflation issues. We have appropriations. And so we have got to get our act together. I think that's going to happen tomorrow night. It's not going to be pretty, Brianna, but I think we will get that done. This is the, the uh, uh, to coin the phrase or to mimic the phrase, the making of the sausage, and you're seeing it play out right here. Oh, I, yes, we certainly are. Um, so the Senate, you mentioned Israel, the Senate back this week, you had uh, Majority Leader Schumer saying that he and Minority Leader McConnell favor passing Israel and Ukraine aid together. Is that dead on arrival in a Jordan-led house? I believe that it is, and rightfully so. There are two unique circumstances. With Israel, we have a very long-standing ally with a memorandum of, of understanding with the defense package. It's been there for decades. We've got a very established democracy in that Middle East. With Ukraine, totally different situation. We've already sent $113 billion, I believe, to them. There, is a, uh, uh, there always has been questions about just how democratic their government is totally different situation that needs to be carried out and evaluated on their own merits independently. I also want to ask you, Mike Rogers, obviously a key Republican who flipped to support Jordan over the weekend, said they had a couple of conversations and they agreed on the need for Congress to pass a strong defense authorization bill, appropriations to fund our government's vital functions and other important legislation like the Farm Bill. Should we take that to mean that Jordan is assuring moderate Republicans that he is not going to let the government shut down next month. Yes, if you look at the continuing resolution that Congressman Jordan supported and that I did too, the uh, mandatory spending was held intact. You had your Social Security, your Medicare, your defense, that was all held intact. Veteran spending was all uh, untouched. The cuts came in other areas. It came in across the other uh, bureaucracies and the other agencies. By the conversation with Mr. Rogers, I think you got an indication where a speaker, Jordan, would be, and that's going to prioritize the things that are but most I asked important, about the but shutdown. also take the cuts. Will, I asked about the shutdown. Is he assuring moderates that he will not let the government shut down next month? Because that is not what you're saying there. I, no, I don't think so either. And I think that shutdown is going to be on the table. 
Let's face it, uh, we are a very thinly led majority in the House of Representatives versus uh, a majority in the Senate and, of course, in the White House on the opposing party with, with an opposing agenda. And so I think that shutdown is going to remain on the agenda. Right, Congressman Russ Fulcher, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.